Hey guys, welcome to the video and uh, welcome to a, a messy desk here on the Dutch RC channel. Uh, I am building a new quadcopter as you can tell and uh, this is part of my quest to, well, first of all inform you about uh, good motors, what is a good motor for a 5 inch quadcopter in this case, but also my personal quest for the, the perfect quadcopter. <laughs> yeah, so this at this moment is my perfect frame. This is the Foxier Aura 5, and this stack, uh, well, this is uh, just another stack basically. It's a good stack, but uh, the video is not about this stack, it is about. The content of these here boxes. So yeah, what is the perfect motor for a 5 inch freestyle quadcopter? I have me some new motors to try from T-Motor in this case. And they look quite nice, don't they? Yeah, so in this video we're gonna test these motors, the T-Motor MCK 1950KV 2207.5 motors. Here we go! <laughs> you serious? So guys, the T-Motor MCK version 3, and this is the, again, 1910KV version. 2207 and a half motor. So MCK, that's, uh, they are named after Min Chung Kim, which is a well-known uh, racer. Is he Chinese or North Korean, by the way? I'm not even sure. Tell me in the comment section below. But um, okay, so I, I really don't know what his, his involvement with these motors uh, is. Maybe he picked the color, maybe he had some input in the design or the 2207 and a half part. I don't know, um, yeah, but still, T-Motor is obviously a well-known brand in Motorland and I'm gonna be comparing these motors with the iFlight Cyberg Zing. Not uh, available anymore, by the way, this uh, Cyber Zing, 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 <laughs> yeah, but it's also a 2207.5 motor and I have an identical identical quad with these motors. These are 1999 kV, uh, basically 2000 kV, which is a little bit more, but not a whole lot more, like 5% more. So we'll take that in uh, into consideration uh, while comparing these uh, motors. Very nice looking motors as well, by the way, the Zyberg. I, I don't know why they stopped selling these. Um, and not an inexpensive motor either, as is the T-Motor motor. So I don't do a whole lot of motor reviews and I'm not one for bench tests. I'm not saying that there's no merit or value to bench tests. I'm simply looking for the best motor and for me that would be a motor that feels nice, has a reasonable efficiency and power band. And with power band, I mean that it's not spiky in uh, the lower half of your throttle or the upper half of your throttle or anything else. It has a uh, as flat a, a torque curve as possible. That's what I am looking for, and you can only sense that while flying. In my humble opinion, of course. Again, there is definitely merit to bench tests, but I'm not the one to do that. Uh, okay, so these uh, MCK motors, the T motor MCKs, come with um, stuff. They come with stuff. Yeah, let's see. Uh, they come with... Come on. Don't be shy. They come with two sets of screws. Uh, a set of screws for 4 mm uh, thick arms and a set for 5 mm thick arms. That's nice and they look and feel like nice screws. Uh, one propeller nut, obviously, and one... Uh, what is this? A vibration dampener or shock absorber maybe. It's something that's in the motor around the shaft, but again in the motor and it absorbs shocks. Yeah, a lot of motors have that. This motor also has that. And uh, you get uh, one spare screw, uh, axle retainer screw, this screw, there's a spare for that, and an, uh, a washer, probably also uh, a washer underneath that uh, shaft retainer over there. So you get a spare of that. And that's it. Yeah, but uh, again, nice to get two sets of screws in uh, two lengths. 
And uh, so that's what you get. Oh, you also get a bunch of decals with the motor. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. I noticed that uh, other T motor motors, uh, their uh, in their F line, the F60, for instance, came with more luxurious packaging, a nice tin can. But uh, yeah, I don't know why these uh, MCK motors don't. Maybe it's an older, older product line. I don't know. Even though the fee, the version threes are relatively new. Oh well. All right. Uh, in my motor reviews, I'll be uh, weighing all my motors with the wires, as most motors come with the same amount of uh, length, wire length. Uh, so 33 grams, which is a little bit uh, more than T motor specs, and that's probably because of the the extra wire. And is the other one the same? Just checking. Yeah, 33 grams. Okay, though. And what does that uh, iFlight motor weigh? It is, wow, really? It is significantly heavier. Wow. That's a what? That got. Okay, 38. Huh. Okie dokie. Okay, uh, we'll see how that um, plays out while test flying the, the quadcopters one against the other. Again, both are 2207 and a half motors. I didn't know the iFlights were this heavy. Interesting. What more can I tell you about these motors? Uh, there isn't a whole lot of specs. For instance, the, the alloy of the shaft. I'm expecting uh, that to be titanium or titanium alloy. But the truth is, I don't know. The specs don't say. Uh, T-Motor uses titanium alloy for most of their shafts, I think. Again, I don't know. This isn't a budget motor for T-Motor, like the Pacer and the Villox. Well, actually, those are like a middle of the road in price, right? L around $20 per motor. These are close to $30 per motor, so definitely not uh, budget motors. Maybe you pay a little bit more uh, for the, the MCK? I don't know. But they do look well made and uh, well thankfully you don't get a C-clip, you get a retaining screw for instance and uh, you don't get a guard for the motor wiring at the bottom. Some motors do that. Some motors have a guard to prevent the wires from being pushed up against the bell. It feels pretty stiff, I don't feel the need really. But uh, well, that uh, might have been a nice option to see. Okay, next thing uh, is some comparative flying. I'll install these motors and we'll uh, set them up against those iFlight Cyber Zings. Here we go. Alrighty guys, we've got ourselves two mostly identical quads. The frames are the same, the propellers are the same. These are Nepal, Dal Nepal N2s and they are on both quadcopters they are fresh propellers. And the stacks are different. Yeah, but they are F7. The specs of the stacks are mostly the same. Betaflight configuration and version is the same. Betaflight stock. Betaflight stock, keep that in mind. The filtering is the same. That's it. I'll be using the same LiPos. CNHL Black Series 1100. And they aren't new. However, I've selected two LiPos with the same internal resistance. L roughly the same age as well. I need me some uh, new uh, LiPos. I didn't even have fresh LiPos. Oh well, but again, they'll be the same. We'll first set a baseline with the iFlight. Cyber Zing Motors, right? Here we go. Alrighty, alrighty. Side note, before today I had never flown either of these two quadcopters with an action camera on them. Yeah, I've got uh, the DJI Action 2 on both of these quadcopters. So, uh, let's first do a little speed course flight and I'll try to do the same with the other quadcopter. Okay, a power loop thing. Okay, let's catch it. Oh, okay. Okay, so different. 
I know this quadcopter here. This is uh, Aura 2, as you can tell uh, from the OST. Yeah, so, but this used to be a very sporty quadcopter without an action camera. I can definitely sense the extra weight. Maybe drag? No, probably only weight. Yeah, uh, okay, but uh, still flies very nicely, but it's no longer a beast. But it flies reasonably well. Again, both of these quadcopters fly on stock beta flight uh, pits. However, the filtering is uh, set to 1.2 on both sliders, but that's the same on both of these two quadcopters as well. Um, okay, I noticed that this quadcopter, so with the iFlight motors, definitely needs a little bit of a tune. Now that it has an action cam uh, on it. Yeah, there's more, prop there's a little bit of a wobble actually on low throttle. You know, interesting. Still a, a very nice quadcopter. And uh, the, the worst thing that could happen today <laughs> is that uh, the verdict is that these iFlight motors are better since uh, they are not uh, available anymore, right? Okay, so uh, you know what? Uh, we'll switch to the onboard video since that uh, DJI camera can record audio pretty well. So you can have a listen to these motors. Okey-dokey, so that is our baseline. Again, uh, this is still a fast, as in uh, horizontal speed, fast quadcopter. And uh, we'll see what uh, the quad with the T-motor motors will do. But yeah, the things I notice is um, this quadcopter has taken quite a hit from that action camera and uh, the tune is uh, needs more work or needs work. And we'll see what the other quad does. Okay, let's sit it down and we'll switch right to Aura 4 with the T Motor Motors. Alrighty, guys, Aura 4 in the house. Brand new quadcopter with the T Motor MCK Motors. Here we go. We arm and we have liftoff. I did, of course, test fly the quadcopter, but without an action camera again. I have flown neither of these two with an action cam before. Also, side note, I've switched to a higher camera angle. On, I'm switching all my quadcopters to a higher camera angle just to test, right? I was at 35 degrees and now I've switched to 40 degrees. Okay, let's do a power loopy loop thing. And catch the quadcopter. Okay, uh, that took far less work as in throttle. That felt like a quadcopter without an action camera actually. Okay, and the uh, second thing I definitely notice is that this quadcopter feels less fast somehow. I have checked, the camera angles are the same, but... So... That's uh, so weird, I'm not sure. Yeah, and... I can also see that this quadcopter now needs a little bit of tuning, but only a minute bit. I don't see the wobble that I saw on the other quadcopter, and I do see some propulsion oscillation, uh, but l 
not as much as the other quadcopter as our two with the iFlight motors. So two things. The, I guess this quadcopter has an easier time managing the propellers and the weight. But it's also a little less fast. Okay, fair enough. Again, same propellers. Definitely feels less fast. I'll have to check the, the recordings. And you tell me in the comment section below if this quadcopter to you looks and feels less fast. Okay, on this Aura 4, we'll also switch to the DJI camera so you can have a listen. Here we go. Okie dokie, so again, you tell me what are your impressions. Um, also, on the first run, the iFlight motors were not warm at all, maybe one or two degrees above the ambient, but okay, so not warm at all. And we'll see what these iFlights do. And uh, yeah, the LiPo uh, on my first flight was definitely warm, which was to be expected. It is a worn LiPo, and this is also a worn LiPo. Okay, worn low battery, yeah, okay. So both quadcopters can do flights easily of four minutes if you fly no in a normal fashion. So guys, the T-Motor MCK 2207-1910kV motor. It is a nice looking motor, it is a Unibel motor, it is also a premium product, right? It's not cheap. T-Motor has a good reputation. The thing is, T-Motor tends to have a good reputation with uh, consumers, pilots if you will. iFlight also has a good reputation, but maybe more with reviewers? Um, I'm not completely sure uh, what to make of that. You tell me again in the comment section below, what are your impressions of the two brands here? Yeah. Also, I also considered the F60 Pro uh, version 5, a new motor from T-Motor. However, those weren't uh, in stock over here. And uh, I came across this motor and I was wondering uh, what it would be like. That uh, F60 Pro version 5 is more expensive, like $5 a motor. And I'm not sure what to expect from that. Should that be a far better motor um, for $5? <laughs> I don't know. So far this motor works out well. I haven't uh, crash tested it, obviously. You do that on your own <laughs> dollar, <laughs> right? I do like the power band of this uh, motor and it seems a little bit, well, yeah, it, it seems a little bit more efficient than the iFlight, but hard to say, there's not much between the two. The, the MCK motor uh, handled the, the weight of this quadcopter and the propeller. These propellers are harder to tune in, uh, in general. So yeah. It did well, and um, it, it's a, again, it's a nice looking motor. And that's it. And the uh, next motor test I'll be doing, I'll be actually uh, reviewing a Gap RC motor. Yeah, unexpected probably, but I was interested by uh, one uh, specific motor of them, so that'll be coming up. For now, I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.